Welcome back to Brazen Brits, my name is Lawrence. About two years ago, feels like yesterday, but two years ago we installed this. I think this is the Halo View RD10. Can you remember? I think it's the RD10. Uh, and we love this. It looks like a rear view mirror. So if you go way back in our channel, we went to Houston, we had our Fury on screen stolen. And so Halo View saw that video, they sent us this which I love. The best thing I like about this is it looks like a rear view mirror. So if you're parking up in a car park or a, uh, I don't know, you're going to some event or something, you don't have to put the camera away every single time, which we should have done with our Furion. Instead, they broke in and they stole it. Um, so anyway, this stays up there the whole time. When it's off, it actually looks like a mirror. You can probably see the camera there. Uh, and it has a front camera here, so it kind of acts as a dash cam. Uh, and then it has a rear camera on the back of the rig. They just sent us the new one. This is the BT12, I think. I will confirm that. But you can see it's very similar. It still goes on the mirror, so it's a lot bigger, uh, but it's exactly the same. So, I haven't even turned it on yet. Let's roll the intro and we'll get into it. It really makes me wonder. You know, Lawrence really should know the names of the products he's about to promote. What is it, Lawrence? Is it a BT10? No, I don't care what the product name is. <laughs> I think it our doesn't matter. Might. No, they don't. <laughs> it's the BT12. Okay. I confirmed. It is the BT12. So this is the bigger version, and it's actually the Byte Tango system. Oh. Yeah. BTM12. Do you want to know the volts and everything? It's a DC 11 18 volt. Yes, I think our viewers. Is that would important? Find... Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> USB C, it's got in here. You've got even get a memory card with it. That's really cool. Normally, this stuff, they don't. I remember they did that with the other one as well. 64 gig as well. That's cool. Nice. Free because it is a dash cam. So, the difference between this and the other one, so. What did I say this was? <laughs> the no. RD10 or something, anyway. Probably isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, this one has a camera here and it flicks out. If you watch my first video, I didn't know that this flicked out. And yeah. I'm like, that's annoying. Bombarded with comments. So thank you for everyone who told me that. So it has a front camera and then you have the rear camera at the back. This is a micro USB. This also came with a, with a micro SD. Uh, so this one is different. This has a separate front camera, uh, which is cool. Um, and that acts as a dash cam, it records and everything. I haven't turned it on, I just read that. Uh, and then it has the rear camera as well, which is apparently better than this one. So, um, although I can use that one, I think, but we'll see how far we get today. I'm really interested in this screen because there's a few reasons why I like this. Not that we really need it, but it does have like Apple CarPlay and stuff. Ooh. So this is much more functional than the other one. This one was literally just all about the camera. Um, so this has a whole bunch of stuff. The one thing that I am interested in, because I've literally just taken this out of the box, is I'd like to know if this can Bluetooth or connect to your radio, oh, like a phone. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. Completely pointless, because yeah. our truck has everything. Yes. Like it has the <laughs> car play and everything. But for people who don't, we'll have an older that truck. would be good. It also yeah. does Android Auto, by the way. So yeah, if you have an older truck with like a Bluetooth connection or something, it'd be cool to stream your phone to this and this to your head unit. Right. Don't you think? Yeah, but we can try it. But there's no output, so there's no auxiliary out, so you can't do it by cable, it'd have to be. Whatever. Right, uh, let's just cut. I'm, I've laid everything out. You get a ton of stuff with this. Like, I I was confused about how much stuff was in the box. There is different mounts, there's different connectors, there's different ways you can plug it all in, there's uh, extenders, there's lots of different antennas. Like, they went all out. So if you buy this, you should literally have everything you need because there is so much stuff in there. So I've laid it out pretty simply. One thing I've learned when doing this, when I installed the other one, I was having issues connecting the camera at the back to the, to the unit. So I'm gonna plug everything in without fitting it first. I know, you would think by my age, I would have learned that already, but I'm gonna um, lay everything out so I know what connects to where, try and dry fit it without actually installing it properly, and then we'll get into the proper install. Right, okay, now I'm done, Natalie. Let's go. Get to boil alive in here. I can't open the window. Help. Thank you. All right, so there are two main components that I'm looking at right now. The first one is the, the actual screen. It's much bigger, but it does fit up there. Okay, it's pretty big, but I 
think the other one was a little bit too small, I'm gonna be honest. It was fantastic, but too small. Now this is new, This isn't the other one doesn't have this, so this is basically how you power everything in. Um, honestly, the last one I hardwired to our upfitter switches, so I need to figure out how I can do that with this and whether this thing is actually needed. I prefer the power to go straight to the camera. But it's very simple. So the screen has three inputs here. You have power, you have the rear camera, we're not worried about that right now, and the front camera. The power and the front camera connect to this, so what I'm going to do is plug those in. Click and front, click. Then. I plug this into the outlet. Nothing, oh, oh, it's happening. We're both doing this for the first time, by the way. Oh, that was lovely. Oh, look at this. Driving recorder, Android Auto. Notice, start recording. Okay, so the cool thing is, it's touch screen. Oh, I took a picture. Okay. So, if you don't have an RV though, is this still useful? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, so it acts as a, so the cameras, like if you didn't have the rear camera on the RV. It's a dash cam then? It's essentially a dash cam, so you could put this in any car and it records. So it records, that's what the memory card is for, so it all records on this. Oh, okay. So if you, this doesn't have to be an RV observation cam, you can wire this up. So you actually have, I think this might work, I'm not sure, the huge long cable here. So you could essentially have the front camera mounted here with the screen, and then the back one mounted on the back of the truck and just have it as a dash cam. Ah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's why I'm so excited about it because I mean, not for us, but your like your car doesn't have CarPlay, so you could essentially, for the price of this, you get an Apple CarPlay that connects wirelessly to your phone and to your radio, and you get a forward and rear-facing camera that records as a dash cam. That's a really good idea. I might have to get one for my car. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Livia, if you're watching, can you send us another one for Natalie's Explorer, please? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we have we actually have the front-facing dash cams in both of our cars anyway. Yeah. Um, which I've caught a bunch of cool accidents on those, by the way. But I and like I say a, cool I because like no one was one. injured. Yeah, a real one would be good, because yeah. if someone goes into the back of you and yeah. then they say, well, you reversed into me, mm. there's no way of proving it. So yeah, I mean, this is a really affordable way of doing all of that. That's what I said. Like, they're, they were in a meeting room. They said, how cool can we make this? What are all the features? And they went through everything and then decided just to make everything instead of picking the best ones. Oh, good. wait. Um... might be a long video. <laughs> I didn't plug the camera in. Right, that, that will do it. Yeah, that's probably why it doesn't work. Oh, oh look. Hooray. Oh no, now I turned it off. <laughs> oh, look at that, cool. Oh, it's upside down. Okay, can you see all this? Yes. Right, there's Natalie. We're okay. sweating in the truck because it's so hot today. That worked instantly, look. Cool, look at that. It's infinite. Okay, so. Uh, here you go, you can look at that. Thanks. So we're double recording. All right, so, the so I cut and I played around with it for a little bit, so I still haven't wired anything in. I do have these, so here's, this is really cool. So if you have an older vehicle uh, with no input, you or car player or anything like that. So for example, your car would be good, Natalie. We need one of these for yours. So I've synced this up via Bluetooth to my phone. Very simple. You go in, you look for it, it says hello view, you click it, sign it. Like literally took seconds. So there's, here's a couple of cool things. You hit car play, takes a little while to come up. And when it comes up, you can see, one, you've got the front camera, you can change that to the rear camera, but you can also have navigation. So any apps, same with Android Auto, I don't have an Android phone, so I can't try that. But you can actually have this, so you can have your maps from your phone. If you have like the RV Life navigation app, I bet that would work as well. I don't know why it didn't show up, but uh, so you could have that there. You can actually move this around or make this full screen as well, but this is really cool. So when we're driving um, on highways, it's really nice to see the rear camera so that if you're changing lanes or you can see if anyone's behind you, that's really handy. That's the main reason for us having the camera. I find that more useful than actually having the camera to back up. So 
that's why they call it an observation camera not a backup camera it is, does help backing up so that's the first thing that's really cool the other thing is I was wondering this also you can control the music through your phone so if you want to listen to something on YouTube which is what I use most or podcasts or anything like that uh, this is really cool so you Bluetooth your phone to the screen already went through that dead easy um, anyone can do that the other thing is you have a setting on here I'm gonna try and find it hold on and the setting is we go back to car it's a really cool touchscreen it's very re reactive so there is FM launch here so you can set this to a radio frequency that you're not using and this will broadcast your phone music through this through to the radio so at the moment I've got it set up as 87.9 you can configure this however you want there we go uh, and then I turn the car to 87.9 and it will come through I didn't have the ignition on so the radio wasn't on okay so the ignition is on we've set this to 87.9 it's just a little toggle thing there as you can see here it's set to 87.9 on my radio there's a little bit of reception somewhere there's probably a local radio station you can change it to whatever all I'm gonna do is I've got YouTube up on my phone I'll hit play it was actually spurred by our collaboration group if you've seen our collaboration videos so um, we're having a conversation in our group is going through uh, this and it's something that we talk about a lot between us mm -hmm. so this video is connecting to this via Bluetooth and then it's connecting to the radio via radio frequency very How cool is that? <laughs> Even Natalie's smiling, that's so cool. So we don't really need it in here because uh, I have CarPlay on here. But for someone, if you have an older truck that doesn't have CarPlay or something, which we love by the way, I hate getting in Natalie's car because it doesn't have CarPlay. Um, yeah, you can, this, this bridges that gap and it's all wireless. Not completely wireless, I mean the phone to this to that is wireless. So the only thing that annoys me so far about this, Natalie, is this... Uh, it gets the power from this, which means this has always got to be on the dash. Oh, we have so many things plugged I don't, into the dash. I just want everything clear on here. So I do have a solution. Okay. Which was my solution. So the power to the old screen goes from my upfitter switches up here. It goes down, well, it, well the upfitter switches go over there automatically on a Ford. Um, I'll do another video on that one day. But that power goes down underneath here to a cigarette lighter because they were the cheapest way of doing it. And so the cigarette, the 12 volt goes to the cigarette lighter and then I then have a little adapter to USB that goes to the old camera. So I could do that and then I can just hide this somewhere because I don't want it here. I mean, it looks very nice, but it's just something else that's cluttering everything up. So it's gonna take me a little while to install this because I think I'm gonna to have to go underneath here, plug this into the cigarette lighter and then that gives me the power. My biggest concern with that is this is the radio for the camera out back. And being down here isn't a great idea. You really want it as close to the back as you can. So anyway, I'm just thinking out loud now. So let me get all my thoughts done. Um, first impressions, fantastic. Not keen on this. Let's skip to something more interesting. Okay, I'm up on the rig because I want to try something that I think other people might be interested in. Whoa, hello, it's a wasp. Um, the old system, as you can see, the camera is at the back. Cable runs all the way along. This has been there with the sticky pads they provided and it works perfectly. Here is where we have the signal booster for the camera because our rig is so long we have to have one of these. Now this one broke pretty early on. Uh, I didn't rip it off, I've just left it there. And this is the other one uh, that they sent out. So I, I just sent them an email and said, hey, this is broken. They sent me another one out straight away. So fantastic support. So I need to sync this. I want to see if I can sync this to the new system. I'm hoping it's going to be the same and it will just work. Um, the cameras look the same. They're both 1080p, so I don't need to see any reason why I need to fit the new camera. I could use that as a spare or I could put that on the back of the truck so I can use it as a rear camera when we're not towing. Anyway, I'm gonna try and sync this up. So I'm gonna phone Natalie, get her to press the sync button in the truck, and I'm gonna press the sync button on here, see if it works. All right, so we tried to uh, sync this to the old camera and it wouldn't sync. So I just came up quickly and plugged the new camera in and it just synced immediately. Is that right, Natalie? Yep. Cool. Is that yes? 
I, I had cool and then nothing else. Oh, is it cool? Does it look good? Oh, yeah, it does actually, yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, so the image is good. Is it quick if I move it around or...? Yeah, it's a little bit juttery, but yeah. Okay, there is another antenna they get. They give you a bigger antenna, so I might try that. Alright. Uh, okay, cool. Alright, I'm coming back. You can see something funny. Okay. So I went up on the top of the rig and pressed the sync button to wire it up. Yeah. And uh, I should have pulled my shorts up because... Uh, oh dear. I ripped my shorts. Oh no. That's funny isn't it? <laughs> oh look. Does this count as nudity? <laughs> okay. Cool, so uh, although this looks like a screensaver, that is actually because the camera is just laid on the ceiling of the of the RV pointing up. But uh, it's very good quality, it's better than the other one I think. Um, but there is, where's my thing gone? That was weird, oh, okay, so you double click. Um, but you can flip here, so that's just us obviously, so that would be the front view. Uh, and then that would be just the rear view or you can have both. Or, if you go to CarPlay, which is here, still trying to connect to my phone because my phone is actually at the back of the rig, still up on top. So you can have the map and then here. So I wonder how you change this. There must be a way to change this to, uh, uh, to the rear view, which means that you can have your map up and you can see what's behind you if you're changing lanes and stuff. I love this. Yeah, it's very cool. It is really cool. Halo View has come f so far. I know people, there's a lot of Chinese stuff that we don't like, but if you think of brands like Anchor, mm -hmm. who I think were bought by Amazon, they started out as a cheap Chinese battery, iPhone battery and made cables and things, and they're a really good brand now. And I think Halo View are doing exactly the same thing. I think they started off a little bit cheaper and now they're really getting into the quality of stuff. It's amazing the features on here. I haven't even gone through anything, but through everything. But uh, I imagine they sat there in a meeting and said, right, what do we want out of a observation camera? I wrote a list of everything. Then when they went to pick and choose which things they were going to include, they picked everything. <laughs> like, honestly, this is really cool. It's got CarPlay, Android Auto. It's got the two cameras. It's Wi-Fi. There's Wi-Fi streaming. It has an FM transmitter in here to go through to the radio. Um, they surprised me last time as well. This is fantastic. So the only thing I don't like is this thing. This thing hanging out. I need to find a way of hiding that. The other thing I want to test, which I can't do now because I'm still working on the rig, so I can't even hitch it up and go driving because there's crap everywhere. Yep. Um, so I might try it, see if I can plug it onto the back of the truck or something just to see how it works functionally up here. Um, and then we'll try it properly. But we're hitting the road in, what, three weeks, I think. No. <laughs> Four okay, four weeks. Yeah, so then we'll give you three, a four, four weeks, whatever. Four so we, yeah, we'll try and use it then, and we'll let you know how it goes. But is there anything else I haven't answered here, Natalie? Uh, the only thing I want to go through is maybe the install if we have time. But I covered everything, right? Functionally, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This is geek stuff. This is your territory. Are you? Is this like? Yep. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> All right, we're not going to bore you with the entire install. Uh, if you are interested, leave a comment. Maybe I'll do a members video on how I've wired everything up into the uh, uh, upfitter switches. Uh, so the rest of it is just tidying up the wires and um, fitting the camera to the back of the RV, which is a real pain. It's not a real pain, but I siliconed it all in, the last camera, because I didn't think I'd ever take it off again. Oof, so I'm yeah. a bit bummed that last camera and antenna doesn't work with it. Maybe I'll, I, we have a contact, um, William, I normally talk to at Halo View, so I'll ask him if there is a way you can sync that up. Just because I'm lazy, I don't want to take the other camera off. No, yeah, that's fine. Um, but anyway, so I can do that, and then the rest of it is just running all the wires inside here, but that's fantastic. Like, I, I, honestly, I'm really, really impressed with that. Um, yes, people would, you know, consider it as cheap Chinese stuff, but it's absolutely not. I never, you keep saying that, I've never, I didn't know that. Yeah, no, I've heard that a lot. Oh. When people say, oh, should I buy Halo View or Furion or something like that? Oh, I'm not buying cheap Chinese crap. Well, honestly, this is not cheap Chinese crap. No. It's, it's really good. Yeah. It's a little bit slow, let's be honest. It's not like a Pioneer head unit or something fancy like that that people spend like $2,000 on. Yeah. Right, so but this it is works. It's cost effective and it works. Yeah. yeah, no, it's great for the price and it's fantastic. I mean, it being up there on the mirror, it just doesn't look like there's a camera in here. It looks like yeah, some I agree. weird kind of thing. So, yeah, well done, Halo View. Knocked it out of the park again, I think. And now we need some new shorts. 
Yeah. Can you buy? Me? <laughs> hey, Lydia, can you buy me some new shorts, please? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, these are my working shorts, so they're gross anyway. But yeah, yeah. they need to go in the. Does in it not look trash. sexy? No. no Why no. is it when girls wear shorts and they've got slits down it? Everyone's like, "Oh, you look so pretty." So fashionable. Yeah. yeah. I do it. I got ripped shorts. This is a fashion statement, Natalie. <laughs> look at this. That's great. Uh, anyway okay well thank you for watching uh, i hope you found this interesting i didn't want to go on too much about everything and anything and cabling and wiring and stuff like that but if you are interested i'm happy to do another video um and so yeah so we're going to leave a video up here that we think you will enjoy uh if you found it useful hit the thanks button uh i don't know if we have an affiliate with halo view i think we do no idea no idea <laughs> if we do and we can save you some money we will put it down in the description um so go and check that out uh yeah don't forget to like subscribe if you haven't already and if you'd like to join and become a brazier and support natalie and myself uh, go fund me for lawrence's shorts <laughs> hit the join button <laughs> hit the join button <laughs> and if anyone needs my address to send you shorts then uh, let me know